Between 1969 and 1971, the FCC created public access television, a form of media where the general public can create their own television programming, which can be played on local TV. For YouTube, if you wanted to make strange videos, this is where you go. And strange videos there were. Sometimes I like to call public access the deep web of television because of all the strange shit that's there. So I decided to gather some of them to show you guys. This is 10 Bizarre and Creepy Public Access Shows. Sister Who Presents Meet Sister Who, a spiritual nun who hosts her own show about helping people grow spiritually and personally and develop a positive attitude toward discovery, diversity, and constructive change. That is, according to our website. In it, it describes his show as an ongoing series that discusses about issues that relate to spirituality in some way. Sister Who means really well, surely, but he's just so damn creepy. As all public access shows, production value isn't that great, and the intro is really strange. It drags out for quite a while and there are signs that show random words for no reason. Or maybe a reason that I'm just not seeing. Really, it's all just religious talk, which is fine. But Sister Who himself steals the show. And all 386 episodes, apparently, the newest one being 5 months ago. This is something that I wouldn't want to see when I'm up late at night trying to find something new to watch. The Great Satan at Large If you're deeply religious or if you feel like mentioning God in a negative manner is a bad omen, then I suggest you skip this and go to the next list item. The Great Satan at Large was a public access show that premiered in Tucson, Arizona on Channel 49 in the year 1993. It aired at 6 p.m. on Sunday night on a mostly Christian channel, and for 40 minutes or so, they showed scenes of explicit violence, sexuality, at least in the back of, well, Satan's green screen, and Satan calling God many vulgarities. And on top of that, at the end of the show, there was a masturbating Hail Satan jester. I am not kidding you. As you can see, this did not hold well with many of the Christians of Tucson, and after the hour it premiered, the channel owner was charged with indecent obscenity, which was a charge that could have held him in jail for over 40 years. He ran for the feds up until 2006, where he contracted a deadly, flesh-eating bacteria, which led to his death. Now, when you watch the original haunting footage, it adds this weird, uneasy, eerie feeling. The only thing I can say is that watching the show is like sitting next to an emotionally unstable person at a bar. It feels like someone's going to fly off off the handle and hurt someone at any minute. And judging by the content that you see, that's not a far stretch. The Church of Shooting Yourself The name alone grants it a spot on this list. The Church of Shooting Yourself. A plus for the opening. The entire show is just some guy going about on the streets of Manhattan and rambling about whatever he feels like. But when the show gets darker and quieter, that's when it really sets off an uneasy vibe. When he's staring into the camera, talking to you. I mean, doesn't this look like something that you shouldn't be seeing? Something being withheld from, I don't know, the government or something? The show actually captures some pretty graphic imagery and Unlike others on this list, there's not that many episodes, so there's not much to say. It's just so unusual that, out of all people, this guy wanted to share his thoughts and put it on public TV. Animal Trash Animal Trash is one of those shows that feels like it was from the early 2000s adult television era. And the newest link I found on the show was a Twitter account with only three posts on it. The final post of the trio had a link to a short video or some sort of update to the show. Animal Trash itself is rather odd. Have you ever felt weirded out by early skit from Jim Henson's puppets or 
Have you ever been unnerved by the heavily atmospheric and darker tone of the Dark Crystal? Well, this is a group of puppets who in their first episode end up killing one of their friends. And using practical effects along with cheap yet creepy puppet designs, they go through adult theme adventures which can get rather gory and unusually sexual for a show that looks like this. Yeah, I don't know about that. Cheeseburger. 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 Yeah, eat that cheeseburger. Oh, cheeseburger in my belly. What are you guys talking? Little is known about the program, and no matter how hard we dug, it just leaves itself as a strange, yet entertaining public access show. Joy Junction. I've said this before, but there's something about puppets that are just eternally creepy, especially if it's from something as low budget as public access. Anyways, Ron and Marty was a Christian show featuring a ventriloquist and his puppet talking about teachings by the Bible and the word of the Lord. Ron himself would often drive children to the church and perform his puppet shows live for his congregation. What makes the show creepy is the puppet Marty. He looks terrifying and really disturbing. Well, they said, Marty, come over here and take a look at our pictures. So I walked on over there and I took a look. And do you know what it was? What was it, Marty? Well, it was in Arizona, I'll tell you that right now. What makes the show especially creepy is the ventriloquist Ron. I mean, he looks like a normal dude, right? While he worked hard with his church during the day, at night, his true side came out. You see, Ron would openly talk online about how he wanted to kidnap, rape, and cook the body parts of children. He would gruesomely go into detail about how he would commit his actions, targeting children as young as two years old. Ron was charged in 2013 for possessing child pornography and even conspiring to kidnap a child. It really makes you take a second look at Joy Junction differently. Goth Public Access Goth Public Access truly is the definition of an internet ghost story. Little to no information is known about the show. In fact, very few clips of it even exist. The Know Your Meme page is blank and only contains the video you are seeing now. As for the show itself, according to Crack.com, there is some kid named Saul who is bullied by five kids. He begged his parents to switch schools, but they couldn't. Instead, they made a show on public access. In this clip, he begins to do some sort of card trick before the show cuts to him reading off a morbid poem. When he pauses, an older woman comments, Is that it? To which he responds, rather awkwardly, mind you, No, there is a pause. It really adds to the cheap, on-the-go feeling the show has, and while watching it, don't be surprised if you get a few chills. Miss Mouth In the 1980s and 90s, Miss Mouth was a show on public access television and was one of the most popular shows on there. The host of the show was a man's chin upside down with drawn on facial features, eyes on the bottom of his chin, and a wig around his neck. Miss Mouth would often call people, give her opinion on things like toys and giving birth, and end her episodes with being fed strange substances by her assistants. The last video on her channel was 8 years ago. Wild Record Collection 
This show seems to have no real target audience. And to understand this, you have to boil it down to its basic essence. Wild Record Collection is about featuring album covers from various music genres. Vinyl records, by this time, have been dead for a long time. So, the fact that they decided to incorporate puppets makes it feel like a children's broadcast, despite the only people this might appeal to are collectors themselves. On top of that, one of the offers of the show was known as Anonymous Boy and made queercore films such as Green Pubes. The history behind Anonymous Boy is much more entertaining than this. But what makes the show weird and generally uncomfortable to watch is how the audio just randomly cuts out and how it's clearly just one dude talking to himself and the shoddy nature that it was produced under. Stairway to Stardom In New York, there was a show called Stairway to Stardom, which was the American's idol of public access. It was described as, quote-unquote, an amateur talent show many see as a low-rent precursor to American Idol. It was extremely low-budget, and there was no prize other than being on television. The host, Frank Nassi, would feature amateur singers, dancers, magicians, rappers, comedians, and such to show off their talents. Their talents have not been seen in decades and remain somewhat obscure until recently when 16 full-length half-hour episodes have resurfaced onto YouTube by a superfan named Mitch Friedman. The show surprisingly lasted for 13 years and gained a cool following for attracting so many oddballs. And eventually, the cost of Stairway to Stardom was too much for Massey, and the show finally closed in 1992. Keep in mind that this was before the internet, before YouTube, before Patreon. So, good work on you, Frank. Unwind with the Sweeties. I don't want to seem prude here. The point is not to look at something and say, this is absurd and should be banned. However, this show is honest to God the most uncomfortable thing I had to sit through. The show seems to be about an older man with buck teeth in a green mask and a woman in a lemon colored mask. Each of them are wearing eye eyeglasses. I've only seen one episode and it was enough to make me physically squirm in my seat. The episode begins with the buck tooth man looking at a sexually suggestive magazine. Then it fades to a woman in a yellow mask, much like the wife. She is moaning and talking about a strange story. You know, I went to the stores today, but I didn't have any money. But nobody seemed to mind. As she goes on, she spanks herself, constantly shifting her position into other sexually suggestive poses, and moans. It's almost as though she has a severe case of ADHD along with nymphomania. Eventually, it cuts back to him getting scolded by another female in a yellow gimp mask, accusing him of being in a private moment. Sweetie! Oh, uh, yeah, sweetie, well, well, I was just, uh... You were having some type of a private moment. What was no, going no, oh, on? No, no, oh, oh, sweetie, no, I, I'm sorry. I was just looking at this, uh, this 3D, uh, you know, Jane Mansfield. Uh, I, 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 oh, I, I didn't real. oh. Uh, Is that all you were doing? I lost track of the time, sweetie. I, I, I didn't, uh... The show leaves me greatly disturbed, and... The only thing I could find on it was a few WordPress articles and a limited number of videos, which only leads me to believe they have not moved on to any better works.